Ho oh, ho ho, I am now French because I have the athletes. Huh? Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. You may have recently seen uh, I put up a new wall here in my new shop and I want to start hanging tools on it. Now I thought I could just make tool racks and screw them to the wall or I could put up pegboard, um, but I don't like either of those items. And this is a French cleat wall. It is made completely with hand tools. And I really want to show you a couple different methods that you can do uh, to make French cleats with hand tools. Most of the time, uh, most of the French cleat videos out there you're going to see hanging these on the wall is kind of the introduction to the video and then they show all the other things that they can hang on the French cleat walls. Whereas with hand tools, the problem is how do you make an eight foot long rip on an angle with a handsaw? Um, mm, kind of just scratched my brain on that. So let's dive in and take a look at this. For my French cleats, I'm starting with white oak. Uh, these are about eight foot long strips and I need to plane down one side and joint it nice and flat so that I have a reference surface to rip off of because I need to rip these down to eh, about five inches wide. So we'll start by jointing them um, good and flat all along one side. Once that's done, I can use the panel gauge or a marking gauge to then draw a line a uh, specific distance in from that edge. I think I would, did them at like four and three quarters. I didn't care exactly what the measurement was. I just figured that looks about right and drew a line there. Then I can bring them over to the, uh, the saw bench and rip them down. I do have a video on building a saw bench and plans on my website. It is a fantastic tool and I wish I had built it years before I did. But it makes ripping very easy. After ripping all of the boards to the right length, then we can plane them um, down to the thickness I want. And I don't really care as much about the thickness. They're, they ended up being a little over three quarter inch thick, as long as they're all about the same. But with the scrub plane, I, I love the way it cleans up the surface with this uh, rough sawn white oak. It just does a fantastic job. Now we need to actually make some cleats that will hold these so that I can rip a 22 degree angle or so on the board. And I just set an angle at something that looks close to 22 degrees. Really don't care what the angle is, just as long as it's eh, about that. Um, and uh, that's all the, uh, the precise measurement I need to do. These blocks will then support the wood, and I'll show you what they look like in a little bit, but I'm gonna be laying out all of the marks on them so that I can cut out a notch that the board will then sit in. And I know it's a little confusing right now, I'll show you here in a minute. Once I make one, then I can use that to line out making the other one. I need to make two or possibly three of these. I ended up just making two, um, but some people might want to make three, depending upon how comfortable you are with holding it. Once it's uh, been drawn out, we can cut them down and I um, cross cut it in the uh, vise, and then I will stand it up and rip down the long angle of the triangle. You notice how I have the board at an angle so that my saw is still running vertical. It makes it far easier to cut an angle if you're actually cutting straight, even though the board is twisted to make the angle. <laughs> Let's go back to the uh, main cleats. I start by drawing a line straight across the middle of the board, and then I use that same bevel gauge, and I make a line across that center line so that the center of the bevel gauge is at the same point as the center of the straight mark if that makes any sense. This way I can set up a marking gauge that is the same on both sides so I can cut a line across at that specific angle. Whatever that angle is, I don't care um, as long as my marks line up. Then I can use that marking gauge to draw that line all the way lengthwise down the board and this becomes the line that I follow with the saw. Here you can see how those cleats hold this at that specific angle. This makes it very easy to then cut vertically, just like I'd be cutting a normal board, and uh, and make my cut lengthwise. It took a little bit of figuring out um, right off the bat, just because it, it felt weird or it looked weird, uh, but after 30, 40 seconds of it, it felt just like ripping a board flat um, at a 90 degree angle. And I really like this method, and I'm probably gonna use it in the future, maybe making a few of these blocks at different angles. And you can just slide them back and forth and slowly wake, make your way along the the board just like any other cut and I was really happy with how this came out. So at this point I know a lot of you are asking why did you go through the time of making these 
when you could just simply set the board up vertically in the vise and then use the frame saw or a hand saw to rip down it like I used to do. And yes, I could have done that, except for these new boards that I'm working with, I want to keep them at eight foot long. And I can't rip down that from the top to the bottom. Now I could break these in half and make them four foot long and then it would work great and uh, that would probably be a fairly easy way of doing it. But I wanted to kind of challenge myself and try something that I didn't know how to do um, and just kind of experiment with it. Now, I talked to a few friends at the hand tool school uh, and we batted around a bunch of different ideas from uh, doing it in this to uh, bending yourself over and doing it freehand from the angle or even just laying the piece out and planing down one corner until you got the angle you were looking for. And I really wanted to challenge myself and that's one of the reasons why I decided to keep these at eight foot. And I didn't want to plane down one side because I wanted the idea of, uh, of saving as much material so I can cut this right down the middle as opposed to planing down one corner of each board. And well, again, I wanted to challenge myself. So we came up with this simple design and originally I was planning on something much more mechanical, something with a piece that would hold the boards down and possibly a foot to keep these from falling over. But then I thought, you know, I'm just gonna make these quick and simple like this and I'm gonna put it on there and see what happens. And I have to say, I am flabbergasted with how easy this actually worked. Uh, it, it, it held it perfectly the way I needed it to, and it didn't wobble, it didn't move, it didn't fall over, they didn't twist, and uh, I am extremely happy. So next time you're trying to figure out something, you know, ask a few people for help, but don't be afraid to experiment, and you might be pleasantly surprised at what you find. So let's get back to this and finish up the project. After that, I can come in with a hand plane and smooth out all of the saw marks. I just chalk it up in the vise, and then I have the angle leaning towards me so that I can run along it. And it makes it fairly easy to then check it with that same bevel gauge that's held at that same angle and make sure everything is the way I want it to be. Once I get them all set up and I like the way they are, I can hit them with a block plane, smooth off the corners, and make them, well, basically finished. I just like the way a block plane smooths out and chamfers, makes it happy. At this point, I decided to cut them all to the exact same length as some of the boards were slightly longer. I probably could have done this earlier, but oh well, I did it now. Now on to the finish, and I am going to be using boiled linseed oil. Surprise, surprise. But for uh, shop projects and uh, things that I'm holding in my hands, I, I, I just can't find anything that I like better than boiled linseed oil. I love the color that it brings out in the white oak. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous finish, and uh, it's a very easy finish that's hard to mess up. And for shop projects, it is my go-to choice. I have a whole video on it if you want to see that. For attaching to the wall, I'm going to countersink and uh, uh, pre-drill through at 16 on center. As I built the wall, I know the studs are 16 on center. And then I'm going to use a countersink bit in the brace so that the screws um, sit flush with the wood. Uh, finding a good countersink bit isn't as easy as it seems, but uh, once you find one you like, the world is so much better. I can then just put a screw in through the board and into the pine and back. I didn't pre-drill in the pine, uh, as I know this will hold in fairly well, and you have a serious amount of torque with these braces. It allows you to drive it in just the amount you want. And there you have it. The project is done. There you have it. I now have French cleats on my wall and I'm ready to start hanging up tools. Soon here I'm going to be making a plane till and a saw till and a mallet till and a uh, auger bit till and um, rasps and files and uh, card scrapers and uh, all the other tools. I'm hopefully eventually going to have them all hanging up here. So I'm really looking forward to that and this French cleat will um, get me a lot closer to it. Now, a couple of questions are gonna come up. I only made these at about yeah, 22 degrees or so, and I know a lot of people are gonna say, you should have made them at 40 to 45 degrees, that'll hold them better. Well, honestly, any angle you want is gonna work fine. Uh, your gravity is going to hold it, and any amount of slap, slope is gonna pull it back. The reason I didn't do it at 45 is 45 requires far more angle on it, and I could do that, but no reason to. So, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I have, and I'm looking forward to the future videos putting up things on this wall. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. I do not do any sponsored videos or builds, uh, so you have my words are my own words, and that is because of the patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to find out more about that or help out, you can do so right down here. Also, if you'd like to see some behind the scenes footage and uh, possibly subscribe to this channel, go ahead and do that. Until next time, have a wonderful day.